And tonight, we are going to study how the world expands the order of battle against us under Satan. And our next lessons will be spiritual warfare proper when we encounter the devil and his demons and his minions in direct conflict or combat. Direct nagid. Yeah. Ini unod the flesh. Ini ang kalibutan. Pero may tiyon gid nga atubangon tagid mismo ang mga army ni Satan in what is known as spiritual warfare proper. The order of battle is very basic. We must first win the war against the flesh, against our old sinful habits. That is the first order of battle. We must not worry so much against the devil and his demons because the flesh is the first enemy that we must pray to the Lord we should be able to win. If we are able to live victoriously against the flesh, we will be in a position to be victorious against the world. The Christian who cannot win the war against the flesh, sa unod, inang dutan on nga, daan nga, nature naton. Remember, when a person becomes a Christian, he has still an old nature, and the new nature given to him by the Holy Spirit warfares against his old nature. So, if we do not win the war against the flesh, it is almost certain or sure we will not win against the world. Wala gid kita chance to win against the world. And if we win the war against the world because we have won the war against the flesh, we will be in a position to directly encounter demonic powers which is known as spiritual warfare proper. In the early part of this lesson, we said that we must not miss the first parts because if we jump into warfare number three without winning number one and two, there is the danger of open gates. In our war against the flesh, which are continuing nonsense, amunang concepts ang open gates, and open gates to the world. May open gates sa flesh, may open gates sa world, and we will be sitting ducks for retaliation by demon spirits. In lesson three, we will talk about the perimeter of defense. We will learn that in the book of Job. The Lord is so kind that there is an outer perimeter an inner perimeter, and a personal perimeter. The enemy cannot attack us directly right away. If you notice the attack against Job, first his properties, then his children, his family, then he himself. And then sa iyang pagkatao, first ang iyang lawas, then ang iyang soul. Ang ginprohibit lang ni Lord sa yawa nga hindi pagtandugon was the spirit. We'll talk about that in uh, lesson three, the concept of perimeters of defense. But the, the concept of open gate in the flesh and in the war against the world opens your perimeter to retaliation. Maybe your property, maybe your family. That's why, hindi ka maglumpat pang garit-garit demonyo kung wala natadlong ang paglakat mo sa pangabuhi mo. Wala nagasiling nga we are going to live perfect, sinless lives. No. But there is such a level of maturity in the Christian life that we are able to keep short accounts with God. Please listen to me carefully because this is very critical and very important. We may sometimes fall into sin or lapse into sin, but we should never live in sin. Kisaga ka sa la ka, la ina siya sa pagkabuhi sa sala. 
kisaga kasala ka, hinulsulan mo na yun. Pero kung gakabuhi ka sa sala. Oh, for example, sometimes you entertain lustful thoughts because for a moment you were tempted and then you were able to catch yourself, then you repent, confess, then wala na na. Keep short accounts with God. But if you habitually live with lustful thoughts, if you habitually live with resentment, that is an open gate which will open your perimeter of defense to retaliatory attack. So, careful kita that in the flesh, we have no open gate. In the world, we have no open gate. Then we are ready for direct encounter with demonic powers. I'd like to emphasize the danger of retaliation. Because this is not a joke. This is not a joke. When you deal with an evil spirit, Luke 11.24, and you were able to expel him out either of your life or of a life of a counselee or of a person you are praying for, and you were able to successfully evict him or defeat him, that demon will lick his wounds somewhere it will go to arid places seeking rest, and when it does not find it, it will say to itself, I will return to the house I left, and when it arrives, when it finds the house swept clean and put in order, it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there, and the final condition of that man is worse than the first. So, Amo na nga nag-emphasize kit ko, kita dire, in spiritual warfare, that we should not miss the foundational lessons because we might be excited to learn level 3 warfare when the foundation has not been set in level 1 and level 2. So, please take note, this is not a joke. This is serious matter. Now, the operations of the flesh and gaining victory over it. This is a summary of what we took up last time. Remember the operational principle of the flesh. How the flesh works. It starts with desire. Any desire that is not aligned with the will of God, with the word of God, with the pleasure of God, that is the first operational level or step of uh, the, of the flesh, desire. Then, if that desire is not dealt with, sinful desire will lead to a sinful deed or act. So, desire leads to deed or act. All acts come from desire. In psychology, there is no such thing as an unmotivated behavior. Behavior is always motivated. There is always a motivation for behavior. Why did you do? The answer is because you desire. The desire is the source of the do. If the desire is sinful and the deed is sinful, then you have now a foothold situation. The devil now has a foothold. Okay, I will take up the concept of demonization in lesson three. Because there is a debate, debate here. When the devil has a foothold in your life, are you demon-possessed or not? The answer is none of the above. You are, however, demonized. Is demon possession equivalent to, is, is demonization equivalent to demon possession? Not always. Can a Christian be demonized and yet not demon-possessed? Yes. We will answer that in lesson three. What is the entry point of demonization? Demonization. Foothold is the entry point. When a foothold is not dealt with, not confessed, not rebuked, not straighten up, then it becomes a stronghold. 
And a stronghold is perfect, perfect situation for demonization. Demonization is the Greek word, the immunizumai, which means to be placed under the effective control or influence of a demonic power. It does not speak of possession or ownership. It says effective control or influence. That is the immunizumai. Are Christians susceptible to demonization even if they have the Holy Spirit? The answer is yes. We will take that up in lesson three. Okay. This is just a summary of lesson one. Our weapons for defeating the flesh are basically two classes, the legal and the practical. Legally, we have the authority to defeat the flesh because of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. And I will, I will go detail with this on lesson three. But I assume and presume and I hope that we already know what the death of Jesus on the cross meant. But practically, because legal is not always the same as practical, Authority is not always power, like title over land is not always possession. You can have the land title, but you may not be in possession of your land over which you have the title. Possibly, nga sa Christian life mo, ang titulo sa kabuhi mo, ara na kay Kristo, pero wala mo gin assert ang authority mo kay Kristo pwede may squatter ang kabuhi mo. Kay gintugtan mo ang yawa nga magpanulay sa kabuhi mo under the concept of foothold, stronghold, and demonization. We will also discuss that in greater detail in lesson 3. But victory over the flesh is achieved by the practice of soaking in prayer, soaking in the word, walking in the spirit, mortifying the flesh, avoiding feeding the flesh, feeding ourselves with the things of the spirit, fellowship with like-minded brethren, armor of God, etc., some of which we took up last time and which we will take in greater detail, lesson three. But now, we want to look at warfare against the world. Let us recall how it all happened in Genesis 3. Okay? The Lord placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Enter the serpent in the picture. He tempts the woman to eat of the fruit. And the woman at first said, No, we must not. But the devil, look at what he said. And please pay attention to this. Because as it was in Genesis... So it is the same today. It has not changed. The basic tactic of the enemy. Basically the same. Look at what he said. The devil is speaking. He said to Eve, verse 5, For God knows when you eat of it, the forbidden fruit, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Karuni explained ko nga the temptation of the world is to make us feel that we are like God. Mentally, we do not say that we are God. But the way we live, we are like God because we decide what we want. And God decides what He wants. You, get, you have sex before marriage. You are, you are cheatingly acting immorally like God because you are the God of your life. God decides you want to do it, you don't want to do it. Nagbusong ka. You want to abort the baby. You think you are like God because God decides. And you want to decide. Nobody tells God what to do. And you don't want anybody to tell you what to do. So the same principle. You will be like God. You want to be a drug addict. You will be like God. Nobody tells you stop. You want to float. You want to be like that. Uh, you want to be immoral. You want to dress immodestly. And people get offended and tell you, oh, you do not dress like that. You don't want to be told. You are acting like, quote-unquote, God. Because you don't want authority. 
that is basically the same operational principle. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. Okay. Ano ang principle dire? Last of the flesh, last of the eyes, pride of life. These are the three great operative principles of the world system. The woman saw that it was good for food, that is, last of the flesh. It was pleasing to the eyes, last of the eyes. You will be like God, pride of life. Where is that warned against in the New Testament? 1 John 2.15 to 17, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. So, ato ang gin tau tau sang yawa, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, amuna karon ang understanding ta sang warfare against the world. Warfare against the world is a war against the worldly system that makes pokaw your lust of the flesh, your lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Okay. Please do not misunderstand lust of the flesh. This is not just limited to sex. Lust in Greek means a strong emotion or passion. So, number one is sexual desire. But, anger is also lust. Rage is also lust. Envy is also lust when it is all-consuming. Lust of the eyes, pride of life. Now, what is meant by the world? Because some are confused. Did not God say, for God so love the world? Are we not supposed to love the world? Well, now, why are we now being told, love not the world or the things of the world? Anong butsilingon sini? The word world in First John, which says, do not love the world, is a very interesting word. word. It is the word cosmos from where we get the word cosmetics. It means ornamentation, decoration, Arrangement, emphasis, appearance. Pagwapo-wapo, pa sexy sexy, pa tigas tigas, pa popular popular, pa mangaranon mangaranon. Amo na ang espiritu kag unod sang world. Etymologically, amo na meaning sang world word nga the world system. So the world system is. A very broad word which includes the philosophies, the worldviews, the lifestyle, the ways, priorities, concerns, values, and systems of the world that are not in line with the word of God or God's ways. The elements of the world system do walang gining basic elements. And you will be shocked at this proposition. First, satanic control. And number two, sinful culture. Basta maghambal gani ang Bible world. Hindi gid madula si taning. Kontrolado ni Satanas ang kalibutan. Paano na niya ginakontrolar makita mo na sa culture nga makita kay ang control niya sa likod hindi makita. Pero sa likod sina siya na ang likod sina. Mamangkot kita. Ining mga butang ni nga makita sa kilibutan, si satanas gina, may demonyo gina, mas iyama lang na iya sang makasasala or sang tao nga wala man na gurugid si satanas dayon, nga ibasol mo ang tanan kay satanas. Okay. Look at what the scripture says. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. You will see Satan behind the worldly systems. And you, Christians, God made alive when you were dead through trespasses and sins in which you once walked, now look at the word, next words carefully, following the course of the world, following the prince of the power of the air, that's one of the names of Satan in the Bible, the spirit that is now at work 
in the sons of disobedience. So when you see the worldly system, the sinful culture, you are not just seeing people. You are seeing visible manifestations of invisible demonization of the world system. Among these, we all lived in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of body and mind, and so were by, by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Sang una, sang wala pa kita kakilala sa ginoo, wala kita kabalo nga ginapasaot kita sang yawa. Oy, wala man tuya yawa sa life ko. Ako malang tuya ang nag, nag uh, pawala. Ako man tuya. Ako malang tuya ang nagtilaw-tilaw mga bisyo. Ako malang tuya ang nag rebuildi sa parents ko. That's what you think. From your flesh, gin kaptan ka sang world controlled by Satan and you do not even have to know about it because Sun Chu in the book, The Art of War, says that the brilliant general is he who controls the enemy without his enemy knowing it. Satan does not have to inform you that you are under his control. It is enough that you are deceived. Enough na. He succeeds already. So, all of us, before we knew Christ, we, will, we were following the prince of the power of the air, which is controlling the force of this world. The spirit. Hindi lang ni behavior, ha? hindi lang ni social norms. Spirit good, that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Now, Satan is not everywhere. Unlike God who is everywhere. But my vicarious presence yeah, through his demons and his agents. He is not like God who is everywhere. But still, the world is under his control. Now, look at the extent of satanic influence or control of the worldly system. Colossians 1.13 Who has delivered us from the power of of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Power of darkness. Anoning expression sang power of darkness. Second Corinthians 4.4 4, In whom the God or devil of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. Pwede ang yawa makabulag sang panghuna-una. That is why some people do not have so much interest in the Bible, in things of the Lord. Who has blinded them? Is it just because they're not interested? If you read your Bible, it's the devil blinding their minds so that they cannot believe and they will not believe. And that is categorically said, ang darkness, ang blinding, that is the power of Satan. To, to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. Okay. Here is our first problem in dealing with the world. We have a handicapped worldview. We have a two-tier worldview. Two-level worldview. We are familiar with the material world and we believe in God. That's all our worldview is. There is a problem. We have forgotten about the world of spirits, powers, and principalities Aside from God and aside from the material world, this is what we are not so familiar with. We are not so familiar with the power behind rock music, the power behind ungodly fashion, the power behind media witchcraft, the power of worldly entertainment, the power of the spirit world, in all these other things. Hindi kita aware sini. We think that when we go to a honky tonk, we just went there. We forget that there is a spirit power there. We go to a drug joint, there is a spirit presence there aside from the shabu and the things there. There are spirits there, not just you and your friend. There are other spirits there. You go to an immoral affair, you go to a motel, it's not just you and your ex fling or whatever are there. There is a spirit accompanying you there. 
This is what is known as the excluded middle of the Western worldview. Kita nga mga ginidukar sang West because they are very scientific and material and they are not very prone to understanding spirit world because our best teachers have been trained in the U.S., trained in the West. So when they come back, they lecture, lecture, never mind the spirit. Oh, why are you getting mad? Why are you getting crazy? Oh, you are just depressed. You have clinical psychosis. You have social maladjustment. But there is no understanding of spirit of depression, no spirit of discouragement. There is no spirit of rejection. That's not in the vocabulary of the West. So there is a big problem because we exclude the world of the spirits when this is a very important part of biblical understanding. And this spirit realm is divided into two realms, two kingdoms. The realm controlled by demons, Satan and demons, and the realm controlled by Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That world, the excluded middle, duwala na ang kingdom. There is no middle kingdom. There is no neutral kingdom there. You're either with the devil or you are with the Lord. Those who think they are neutral are already with the devil. There is no middle ground there. So, kaluluoy gining wala kain sindi sang warfare with the world. And those who are under Satan, among ila characteristics, they are dead, they are living in pleasure, they are weak and powerless, etc., etc. Those who are under Christ, they are seated with Christ, they are at the right hand of God, they are exalted and having a name above every name. Uh, Jesus is a Lord over their lives, etc., etc. We will talk about that in greater detail in Lesson 3. The idea supposed to be with the three-tire world, three-tier world, is from personal righteousness, we are supposed to be a community of the righteous and we are supposed to affect society so that society will change. But the sad thing is, it is society that affects the community of the righteous that affects the Christian, making him behave like the world when it should be the other way around. Okay. Before we explain the extent of satanic control of the world, we need to ask first, is not God completely sovereign? Because some theologians are upset when you say that Satan is in control of the world because they are champions of the teaching on the sovereignty of God. God is always completely sovereign. Is God completely sovereign? Yes, of course. No question about it. What then do we mean that Satan controls the world when God is completely sovereign? Did not God create the world and humanity? So, wala na gidni sang maayo nga nabilin sa humanity kay si Satanas na lang nga control sang mga tao kag sang kalibutan? Good question. Short answer. Because we will answer, we will give the long answer in lesson 3. Siling sang Bible, the Lord, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So, God is the complete and full owner of the world. No pr problem about that. And man, kita, including unbelievers, are created in the image and likeness of God in the sense that God has a mind, will, and emotion and we were created in the image of God. We also have mind, will, and emotion and we also have gifts, talents, and abilities given to us by God. So that when you kill a person, you kill a man who is made in the image of God. No problem about that. However, this is the big problem. Something bad or sad happened at the Garden of Eden. What was that? The rulership of the world which was given to Adam was lost by trickery to Satan. Mamangkot ka mo na namin mo lost by trickery man. Ti gatanga si Adan kang si Eve, ginpaingkit sila sang bunga sang kahoy, wala sila kabalo nga ang at stake dito was the regency rights to govern the world. Abi nila, ingkit mo lang ni. Mamangkot ka mo at orni, pwede ka katag, example nga maintindihan, kung doga libo nga uloko sa regency. Parihas bala sa nga katabo sa mga pamilya, nga gatanga ka, ginapapirma ka sa papel nga wala mo na basa. Oh. Ang mahulam ko sa title kay i, ano lang ni, Anyway, hulam lang ni ikaw gid ni ang tag-epirma hilang ni anay okay para sa bangko ano. 
ti wala ka gatanga ka dason may kapi may show pa o ti na may istorya nyo pirma ka man wala ka kabalud did of sale ang ginpirmahan mo amo na ang natabo sa Garden of Eden ang diritsyo to govern the world was given to man siling sang ginoo Genesis 1.28 I will give you dominion or rulership over the earth but Adam unwittingly surrendered his legal rights to Satan Genesis 3 And Satan understands his legal rights. Even when he tempted Jesus, he stood his legal ground. Gintempt niya si Jesus. Siya, lali, di bila, Yeshua, come up here. Then gintala niya sa top of the mountain, gintala niya sa pinakel of the whatever. And siling niya, he, the devil, led Jesus and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, To you I will give all this authority and the glory of them, for it has been delivered unto me. And to whomever I will give it, if you therefore will worship before me, it shall all be yours. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only thou shalt serve. Jesus did not dispute that the authority given to Adam was now in Satan. Wala siya naglalis nga. No, gaya na butigon ka, wala ka authority. Jesus even respected that Satan stole the authority over the world. Ginrebuke niya lang si Satanas, do not worship any other person except God alone and Him only thou shalt serve. But Jesus did not, did not question that Satan stole the authority from Adam over the world. So that is why Jesus had to die on the cross, not only to save man from eternal damnation, but also to have the right to take back the world from the devil in the second coming. Okay. When you understand this, you will understand the tribulation and the great tribulation period and the birth pains. Why is there going to be a big encounter between Jesus and Satan in the second coming? Because the legal right of Jesus of recovering the world will be enforced by him physically in the second coming and Satan will resist it. That is why, kaya muna yung natabu, pinakasimple na lang yun niya, the cross resulted in a decision that the right over the world was given back to Jesus. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. But, Satan is not surrendering. So there has to be a demolition order against Satan. Because he is resisting the decision. Napatay si Jesus, nabanhaw, ang diritsyo, iyan na. Pero hindi pa maghalin si Satanas, so giragin ang matabo sa kalibutan. Earthquake, bagyo. Kaya hindi pag-ibuyan ni Satanas. He is still in position in the world. So that is why there will be physical violence over the take back operation of Jesus para this world will be fully placed under His feet. Now, in the meantime, in the meantime, before Jesus takes over in the second coming, 1 John 5.19 is so crystal clear, the whole world is under the control of the evil one. So, ipasulod ta ni sa ulo ta, the moment we go out, the moment we listen to to bastos music, the least, the moment we see sights of carnal nature, immediately put in your mind, there is a demon power behind that. If only to help us stand our ground that we should not be easily yielding to the system of the world. How is Satan's control Over the world manifested, Revelations 12.9, by deception, he deceives the whole world. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, and he is also called the prince of the power of the air. Okay, I will discuss this in greater de detail in lesson 3, but I cannot skip this in discussion of the world. There are three worlds mentioned, three heavens. First heaven, second heaven, third heaven. In the book of Enoch, there is even a higher place called heaven of heavens, but 
we will not talk about that except in lesson 3. Ang gin-reveal lang sa scriptures, amun eh. The first heaven is the earth's atmosphere. The second heaven is the intermediate sphere between the third heaven and the first heaven because the third heaven is the abode of God. In Genesis, there is waters above the firmament. Ang throne of God is in third heaven. Ang earth's atmosphere where, you, where your airplane flies, that is the first heaven. The second heaven is the place of the stars. Here's another way of looking at it. This is the earth. So this is the firmament, the first heaven. Then where the planets are is the second heaven. And that is where the third heaven is, the abode of God. Another way of looking at it, para klaro-klaro gini. This is first heaven, there is second heaven, there is third heaven. Now, Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. He rules this realm. He rules this realm, and this second realm is the abode of angels and spirits. Remember Daniel chapter 9 which we will take up in Lesson 3. Daniel was on earth. He prays to God. He was heard the first day. From the third heaven, an angel was sent to him to answer him. The angel was intercepted in the second heaven. Spiritual warfare, proper three. We will talk about that. I just want you to be aware of first heaven, second heaven, third heaven. So, Satan, who is the prince of the power of the air, look at how he is described very quickly because we will discuss this in greater detail in lesson three, but paagyan ko lang. He is a guardian cherub. He is full of wisdom. Mayo lang, hindi siya perfect. Perfect siya in beauty. I want you to just absorb this revelation. Always remember that Satan is perfect in beauty, but full of wisdom. He is not perfect in wisdom, but he is perfect in beauty. So if you are looking for demons who are very ugly, we say hello, good morning, and good evening. You are more in danger with very beautiful things than ugly things. Because beauty is the ball game of Satan. He is perfect in beauty. Although he is not perfect in wisdom. He is also called adversary. Satan means adversary, meaning opposition. Everything that God plans, Satan opposes. He is also called the devil. Slanderer. If you hear accusing thoughts in your mind, why kapulos? Hindi na na magkatuto sa ni Hope. Total guba ka naman. Imni to pay battle so. You are listening to the voice of the slanderer. That's the work of the devil. He accuses and puts down. Devil means slanderer. He is called the prince of the power of the air. He is the god of this age, meaning age eon. Meaning, ini lang nga time period. He is not the God of eternity. Only of this age. This present age. He is also called the Prince of the Power of the World. He is also called the King of Death. Now, very interesting. We'll take this up in greater detail in Lesson 3. But just I mentioned now, he is also called the Libyatan, the monster who dwells in the sea. Some people who go on long travels, especially by sea. Sometimes when they pray for protection, Lord, we restrain the works of the Libyatan. Okay? The spirit that devours lives in the sea. Okay? He is also the prince of the power of the air. So when you fly by air or you travel by sea, you already know how to pray. Lucifer means light bearer, shining one, deceiver. He is also called Apollyon, the destroyer. He'll destroy your health, destroy your marriage, destroy your self-respect, destroy your joy, destroy your finances. He is Apollyon, the destroyer. He is called Beelzebub, the prince of demons, which actually means the lord of the flies. Ang Diyos ang mga langaw, ang Diyos ang higko ng mga butang. 
So, when you are entertaining filthy things, you are bowing to Beelzebub. Remember, we will learn this in lesson 3. Satan is such a cheat. He's such a dayaan that he does not want you to know that you are worshipping him because he is willing to receive worship even if you do not know. Unlike Jesus, unlike God, who wants to reveal himself so that you will know him and worship him from knowing him. That's why, gahambal ang Bible, grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the knowledge of Yeshua Hamasya. Ang yawa ya, okay na, nga magsimba ka sa iya, bisan wala ka kabalo. So kung daw nag uh, bulutlog ang mata mo da, sa mga tao nga daw maubahan, nga daw wala na bayo, nga daw galalaway kagid, okay na na sa iya, kay wala ka kabalo, ginasimba mo siya, kay ara na da, siya sa likod nila. Kung daw mabuang kagid sa music nga kabuang na ginyong, na siya ng gitara, pang, pang, Okay na na siya. Siya na nang ginasimba mo. Wala kakabalo. Kay kawatan na siya. So, pating worship mo, kawaton niya, kay hindi na siya magpabalo nga siya ang ginaworship mo. Bilyal, the God of vileness and ruthlessness. Take note of this, ha? Meanness. Meanness. Kapintas. Inablang pwede mo lang gid mahambal sa maayo. Sakitun mo gid ang blatsagon sang iban. Gasaot ka sa music ni Bilyal. Bilyal means ruthless. Accuser of the brethren, angel of light, liar, butigon, murderer, roaring lion. Amo ni ang kakontrol sa worldly system. Okay. What Satan can do in general, I'll take that up in lesson 3. Okay. But his main methodologies, tandaan ta gini, especially when he uses the world now against us, is first level, temptation or beguilement. Ang object sina is to kutibaw your pleasure, to seek pleasure apart from God. Anong object niya? To defile you. Defilement. I'll explain the effect of defilement and the significance of the Torah later on. But let's just go over this. Number two, deception. What is the object of deception? Your mind. Why? What does he want to do with your mind? He wants you to justify yourself. Ah, ti, ako man niya ang ano? Siya man niya nakasala? Oh, why man na siya? Pulos, to justify your resentment or your immoral lifestyle. Third level, this is very tricky. Very tricky. Seduction. My temptation, my deception, seduction. Anong seduction? This is power tripping. When he gives you power, mabal siya, why kagid power? Mau, why kagid yung may madala? Inang lip o tabla ang imo palda. Kay mabinalikid ang mga tao sa imo. So you enjoy a certain degree of power, kay gakadus mo siya, bawad dus mo ang ano Misan, gamay na lang nga power, blaka tilaw ka power. Are you following? Uh, isa pagid, bawai kagid ya power, iimnibla, hindi pagkontrola, kay para paglupok mo, kagpagbuka isang butilya, blahawan sila si mo. Power na mo. Are you following? Um, kabalo si satana, wai kagid ya puder, so, seduce you through sorcery, witchcraft, occult, magic, rock music, to put you in control. Any form of control by anger, by carnality, by sexiness out of place, by whatever, power na, seduction na. That is world system ni Satanas. Kung hindi niya ka madala sa temptation, deception, or seduction, he will just attack you from behind. He will steal from you your health. He will cause accidents. He will inflict diseases. Kaya kabudlay man ni siya, uh, hindi ko man ni siya mapaubah. Huwag man ni siya nagpaubog. Uh, ah, ibungguang ko na lang ni siya sa ano, pagtabok. Kaya blay, eh, patangaong ko na lang ni siya, kag, eh, lipotong ko na lang ni siya. 
oppression and suppression when he uses governmental and evil social and economic structures that give you little or no choice. Like in America now, you cannot preach against immorality because it's a hate crime. May I say this with all due respect to the BIR? Excessive taxation is a form of satanic control over the resources of this world. Inang subra-subra na ginig nga tax bla. Gin pangabudlayan mo na bla. Ti galing kay gutom gid sa kwarta ang kinalibutanon nga gobyerno. Na tax na na sang una. Sang buhi pa ka na tax na patay. Kaya naging tax pa gin po. Sobra na gin. Ang ginapangayon isang ginoo, 10% lang. Ang isa puti sa imo, 33%. Oh. Ina bilang, hindi kagid diyan laway, kagid may mahimo, kaya bisan laway kagad pangita, tagtagan, kagid sang libre nga kondom. And then wars, gira, nangga pangabuhi, kamalinong, kutibawon niya ng mga leader nga magpinatsanay, bumbahan ang balay mo, evacuate ka, bao, ang puhunan mo, ang Gubaon niya lang yung kabuhay mo. So, that's also satanic control of worldly system. Then, he can possess bodies, demon possession, and he can engage in force and destruction like genocide, wars, or drugs. Okay. Let's talk about defilement because this is how the world makes kutibaw with the flesh. He wants to defile us. You know what is the meaning of the word defilement? The word defilement is the Hebrew word tame which means to be unclean or impure. And the Greek word is mianino, to mean to die, stain, contaminate, or pollute. Whether it's the Hebrew or Greek, isa lang na ang understanding sa scriptures, isa lang din, disqualify you from worship. The object of defilement is to disqualify you from worship. What is, Arya, please follow with me because this is very critical. This is where we need the Torah. In the Torah, when you are disqualified, you cannot stand in the presence of God. You are not qualified to enter the tabernacle or the temple. You are not qualified. Look at the lessons that were given to us two or three Fridays ago. I think my sister Maylin. Okay. What is clean? What is unclean? Touching dead persons. Women who had a menstrual cycle or who have given birth. Touching the sick. All these things. Why are they disqualified from worship for 40 days, 80 days, 7 days, 14 days, etc.? Ang ginoo, may ginahambal na siya. Amuni, amuni ang mental training from the Torah nga nag-hope ang ginoo nga tani i-transfer ta sa spiritual life. When, for example, a woman has a cycle, old blood, which represents old life, is a reminder when you are not allowed to worship because you just had a cycle, what is being barinad into your brain is you cannot stand in the presence of God if you operate on old blood or old life. Kasimple sang punto. If you touch the dead, you cannot stand in the presence of God. So, you touch dead things, dead music, dead reading materials which have no life. You cannot stand before God. You touch the sick in the Old Testament. You are not qualified to stand before the Lord. So, ang Torah, nga physical lesson, underscores a spiritual lesson so that even wala na to, at nga mga temple, tabernacle things, ang lesson na gapadayon, which simply says, only when you operate in the newness of life, in the new blood, can you stand in the presence of the Lord. Serious gining defilement. Because here is the indicator of a defiled spirit. Remember ang ego sang defilement, hindi ka ka-worship. Mabalaan mo gid kung defiled ka, kay wala gid damil ang wali kag ang present worship si mo. Ang iban daw mapatay na sang hibi kag dumaluhod na ikaw way gid ipik sa mo, you should be alerted to your condition. You are defiled. What have you been doing the past few days? 
Why is it that the word of the Lord has no effect on you? Ti Arya, damo kita pamasol basol. Ti kay manugali wa wasa kuasa man to. Ang English ya hindi gidiya maglaamo ya bogra. Ang pronunciation niya na lang daan niya nakakasandad git. Pukag off ki man to ang lead singer to sa pagkasintunado. Hinugay na. Because ang tuod-tuod nga anak sang Diyos nga nagakagutom sa pulong sang Diyos bisan wala wala ang manugwali. Ikaw lang gawali sa lawas mo sang mga wala yan na igo nga punto. Nga bisan daw Ga utyo ang dalagan sang wali ya pagwa mo ya busog ka sa si espiritu mo because God spoke to you something in the word even if the career is lipong because he is not the one you are worshiping you are worshiping God That is why ako hindi man sa ano but I have to tell you wala gid ko sa may natinan nga wali nga wala ako ka bless Pag abriya pa lang ya Bible ya, pag basa lang yung Bible ya, bisan ang pronunciation niya sala ya. Nga lumpat ang espiritu ko kay may makita gid ko ya nga bag-o gid nga leksyon. Wala gid ko may may buhi gid ya ang pulong sang Dios ako. Bisan nano kalibagon, bisan him pa na, bisan praise and worship na kulang pa sa akon ang pag-worship because ga pangita ya ang espiritu ko. Gitara man asya, lata man asya, Yamaha man asya, cold it does not matter because I am just hungry for the presence of the Lord. Ginabantayan ko ang lawas ko because defilement disqualifies you from worship. So if I attend a service, and though hindi ko mabatsagan in a few minutes that I'm lifted up, I already check if I have done anything that defiled me in the week. Because the effect of the worldly system is defile you to disqualify you from worship. Amo gini importante gini warfare against incendion ta gini. So, possibly ni that on the outside you look like this, but in the inside in the realm of the spirit you actually look like this. Because the whole week from Monday to Saturday you have been listening to worldly music, bastos music. Ti na obligar ka lang kay Domingo maupod ka sa pamilya amo amo ka man na or ga amo ka man lang na pero actually ang pananaw sa imo sang spirit world amo kani bisan sa physical amoning itsura mo because actually hindi mo na matago defiled ka gid ya defiled ka gid mo na importante gid defilement di ma maingkwento pa kasi di monyo nga amoning sitwasyon mo i will tell you a real story in one in one bible school here or wherever okay there was a case of demon possession and the students called for a teacher pastor to cast out the demon ti ang pastor bao po breman nga maestro ara sa dorm na obligar nga makadto gadaladala siya bible nasipit niya Kay ready na siya mag -rebuke. Wala pa siya kambal. Siling sang demonyo sa demon possessed nga person. Singya, appear! <laughs> Tuod gini niya. Sugid ko sa inyo. Gini. Tuod gini yung istorya. Appear. Amuling lain. Ayang sugpon. Pastor, sugiran ta sila sang ginahimo mo? Gumawa ang pastor. Why gid ka ik? Why ka gidya intuon siniya sa spirit world ya hindi ka gidya ka pretend. Hindi ka gidya ka pa as if as if maubahan ka gidya in the spirit world. Okay. So, Satan uses worldly systems and structures to achieve his purpose by channeling satanic influence or control through avenues of sinful culture that will encircle, emasculate, incite, provoke, seduce, deceive, defile, enslave the flesh and establish personal, relational, social, economic, and institutional strongholds to capture and detain people in his grip. Sinful culture. Kung ni satanic control, sinful culture. The 
culture that is resulting from satanic influence is a culture of lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. I'll give you some quick examples. Ha? I am not generalizing amo ginitanan, pero you can see the pattern. Look at these ads on perfumes. Perfume ni ginabligya, hamot. Abi, uh, these are the best and most branded perfumes in the world. That is Gucci, that is Chanel, that is Dulce Gabbana, that is Calvin Klein. Abi, abi, tanawa na abi. If you don't see lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Oh, that is the same spirit and culture. Bench advertisement. Yan isang bench. Okay? Car advertisement. Look at how they sell cars. Luxury is built in, not tucked in. The power of elegance. What the wealthy are driving. Luxury isn't an option. So, ang undercurrent, sang last of the flesh, last of the eyes, pride of life, aragi niya yung spiritu. Aragi niya. Hindi niya yung kapanago niya. Oh, Lexus nga auto, anong hilabot siya sa... The all new Lexus GS. Look at those curbs. Advertisement sa sigari, pati si Santa Claus. Ini guma ang ginabalig. But last of the flesh, last of the eyes, pride of life. Every every oh. The same. Ilimnon. The drinking man's scotch. Be a girl with a mind, a woman with attitude, and a lady with class. The same. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Ari pagid, don't miss out on the good things in life. This included. Amugi na yung spirit nga ga undergird sang system of the world. Oh. Mardi Gras. Ti, ano na? Satanic culture and influence. Using celebrities that defy God's word. Putting them before our eyes every day. Okay, kilala nyo ni? Mayo-ayo na lang ni Chura Edy. Si Lady Gaga ni. Katy Perry. Ini may laining nga spirituality ginapreach. And she, grabe ning iyang theology. Okay. Ti amo ni ang ginasimba sang kalibutan. Amo ni ang icons, amo ni ang symbols of class in the world. Oh. Rock music. Look at the symbol. That's the symbol of the beast. Oh. Ti ano ano ni karon ni pila ka million ang mga taong under sina nga grip. Okay. Behind rock music is the devil. Amo na Rock music is sex. Research the meaning of rock and roll. Rock and roll is a euphemism for sex because when you have sex, you rock and you roll. The, the undercurrent of the satanic control and influence is, is there. Okay, controlled places. Okay, Tel Aviv, top gay tourist destination in the world. Okay, here is Time Cover Magazine. The me, me, me generation. Ang word, sina di, operative word is entitlement. Ang ini nga generation feels entitled. So, ang bata, makadto kay nanay, kinalangi ko yung cellphone. Hindi yung pwede nga, wala ko cellphone. Yung pobre nga iloy, nga ang takon sang bakya yan, na pungil na, hindi ka bakal, bakya kay mabakal, anay sang cellphone. Kaya ang bata, yan, diritsyo, gidya nga may cellphone mo. Diritsyo, yan, gidya. And ang ang authority to this generation has a neutral effect. Gin research gina sa modern day ng mga psychologists, this generation ang ilang panulok sa nanay katatay nila is neutral, meaning that is their view. It is not binding on me. So if their nanay says about that, dahit ani hindi ka magamu na, hindi man sila magrebuild. Di pero ang epekto sa ila is neutral. Ako man yama decide. What is that? Pride of life. You will be like God. You will decide for yourself. It's just Genesis 3 all over again. Nothing new. The core philosophy about worldly philosophy is 
all about you. What you want, how you look, what you feel, what you need, what do you desire, you, you, you. For example, oh, sample lang. Get your dream body now. A sexy, confident you. Have more fun in bed. Adore your skin. That's the system of the world. It's all about you. What you feel, what you think, how you impress others. That's the worldly system. Okay. Why is this anti-God? Because they will not help you look for God. They will not help you check on your relationship with God. That's not the business of the world. Another effective demonic tool is demonic computer games. Wala na ko time gid sini pero grabe gid ni nga uh, demonization gid ya. Even the characters even look at This is what they call in subliminal programming understanding the ways of Satan as soft cell. Bata uh, three, four, five, six years old, gampang siya mo ni character. Gina desensitize mo na siya sa fashion nga loose. By the time he becomes a teenager, in, wala na na siya moral standards. Okay, okay normal man to sa yung mga itsura. You know? They call it soft pornography. But of course, it's a fight between good and evil, but nabaligya na da ang mga attire, ang mga itsura, ang pamatasan, sang kalibutanon nga mga... And then, the sight of blood gina orientate na siya nga normal ma lang na so kun makapatay ka ti dugo hindi man na siya king kay na train naman ang mind mo so bata pa daw gin tiro na ang ulo tungod sang demonization of this part of the world so the exhortation is abstain from all this lust which war against the soul so ang world to nga system ga kutibaw ga aggravate Gapabakod pagid sang imo nga fleshly carnal nature, sang aton nga carnal nature, to disqualify us, deceive us, defile us, etc. And there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigh the spirits. Please be very aware of the spirit world. E nang inahambal ta nga, ako man na iyang opinion, ako man na iyang uh, philosophy. Please be aware that even in opinions and philosophies is a spirit influence. Spirit influence. I'll, I'll show you a very interesting revelation. Genesis chapter 30. Si Toto Jacob, kag si Angkol, si Leban, you know the story? Yung pangasawa ni Jacob, si Leah. The son, si Rachel. The son, nag-away-away sila. Kaya daw nagdako na si uh, Jacob. And then Laban said, Baw, nag-amo ka na ni, etc. So, nagambal si Jacob. Di malakat na lang ko, sir. Masipak na lang ko. You know how I have worked for you. So, uh, can I, when, when may I do something for my own household? Kay pila na ko di ka tuig sa imo, magwa na lang ko. Di naman kot si Leban, okay, what shall I give you? Yeah, don't give me anything. But if you will do this one thing for me, I will go on tending your flock and watching over them. Let me go through all your flocks today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep, every dark colored lamb, and every spotted or speckled goat. They will be my wages. Niya mo niyo? Niya, sir, para nga daw masipakta, no? Uh, ang mga spotted, akon lang, speckled. Ang mga pure, yada, ang, uh, either complete ang color, i-imo na. No? Para nga we have a system of sharing our wealth so that I can make sipak from you, then you can live on your own, I will live on my own, I will go. Then, ang inhimo ni Jacob, he began to prepare to do this. And this is what he did. Very interesting. Spiritual warfare. Perti manikawa ay si Jacob. Sila niya sa jahonta ni. Kung mag-mating season, ibutang ko ang mga peeled branches sang certain bark of whatever tree was that 
while they are in the watering trough so that they would be directly in front of the flocks or the scripture says before their eyes when they come to drink and when the flocks were in heat and come to drink they mated in front of the branches ano ang epekto bisan wala sila spots pagbata nila nag bata sila mga kanding kag mga sheep nga may mga spots why because they were placed in front of the branches the trows in front of them so that they would mate when they would mate they would see them and conceive in front of them sa king james version before the eyes of the flock that is how it is place in the rediscovery bible okay mamangkot ka mo ti anong punto very interesting what you are watching what the sheep and the goats were watching while they were copulating define their offspring kun ano ginatanaw mo samtang you are in the heat of passion amo na ang ma form nga iconceive mo in your spirit Ti mayo pa ni si Satanas kay nakabasa siya sa Genesis chapter 30. So pinamutangan niya ang tanan nga mga avenues and highways ang tanan nga makita so that kung magplano ka sang life mo, magpangita ka girlfriend, magpangita ka life partner, ang tanan nga hindi amo ang pangitaon mo kay gin conditioning ka sangga conceive ka desire to look for a life partner, gin butangan ka Sights. Are you following? Ay, terrible. The devil understands it. So he makes us see and watch the things of the world, hear the things of the world. Kay kabalugid siya. Ngabaw, amhon ko lang nibla sila, kay tapat gini sila. So, his first level of engagement is temptation. Temptation means pirasmos, meaning attempt or try or experiment or probe. From the root word pirajo, meaning to try. Amo gining makapatay gin nga wordo. Tila wilam lato. Ano ka naman imo ya? Ma try nta anyos ka na. Wai pakakatilaw. Once lang. At least kabalu ka lang blakon hindi ka hindi lang. Try lang, try lang amo ni. Try lang, try. Ate kuha gin sa try. Kay pag try mo na defile ka, na contaminate ka na ensnare ka. The Hebrew word is masa, which means to test, to try, to prove. Temptation is not a sin, they said. It is when you give into temptation that becomes a sin. Pero here is an important thing to remember. The Bible does not tell you to resist temptation. Amen? <laughs> this is one of the confusions that causes Christians to be defeated because they think that they must resist temptation. No, sir. No, ma'am. No man can ever resist temptation. No man. Unless he is dead. There is only one way. Flee temptation. If you don't flee, you are dead. Kung ikaw, ara ka sa hotel, kaginsudlan ka sa bayi o tao nga hindi mo spouse, kaginubahan ikaw, kagmambal ka, maresist lang ko. <laughs> Help me Lord, I will resist this. Hindi ko maamo ka na na. Ah, wala na ginaya, patay ka na na. It's a matter of time. No man has been designed to ever win over temptation by resistance. God knows that no man can resist temptation. The instruction is flee as fast as you can. Why did Joseph win over Potiphar, the seductress? Because he was a runner. Uh, Potiphar's wife, gali. Pot Potiphar is not the wife. That part. Why did he win over Potiphar's wife? Because he ran. If you don't run away, 
it's a matter of time, you are going to fall. The only solution is get out of there as fast as you can. The exhortations against temptation is watch and pray. Lead us not into temptation. Pray that you enter not into temptation. Flee fornication. Flee idolatry. Flee from these things. Flee youthful lust. Flee, flee, flee. So you choose either to give in or escape. Amuning nami nga promise. This is 100%. It works all the time. Please take note. 1 Corinthians 10.13 No temptation taken you but such as is common to man. Man, grabe gito ya, brad ya. Lain gito, unique itong akong temptation ya. Kay satana niya, ako lang yan na tilawang. Grabe, grabe, budli budla gito ya. No, no, guy, na tikal mo lang na ya. Nag-give in, insindihan mo lang ko ya. Kay grabe na gito ya. Kung ikaw man guru, no, guy na. Common, number two. 100% works all the time. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able. That's the second promise. So number one, it's common. Number two, it is not beyond your ability to flee away from. And the third, amogining importante, there is always a way of escape. Wala na gid ko, brad, na kibun gid ko, Pagkaplano, pakutani, makagawa mo, pero ano mo, kay dobulakid. <laughs> Hindi ah. Abre yung mintana, pwede ka ka... <laughs> Hindi, pwede ka ka lumpat. <laughs> Waay ginang ginoo, sitwasyon nga, itugtan ka makanto, nga hindi ka ginoo ka pa, palagyo. So, here is the twin principle. You flee temptation and you resist the devil. You do not flee from the devil. You flee from temptation, but you resist the devil. You don't resist temptation. Pag inkwentro mo sang demonyo sa sidewalk, you stand your ground because your command is to resist him. Inaamblat istingan yun niya, praktisan yun niya. Kung sabla makanto ka sa balay o sa diinda ng mga lugar, imlo do ka dulum do ka palin do balay ibomo. No pili mo may presence. Hindi ka magtalagan kag magtaruti. <laughs> Practice ka sang imo spiritual muscle. Oh, I am a child of God. I am. Bisan do madalagan ka na? Hinaya. Hinaya practice ha? because you must resist. Kisabla man kadto ko sa law office ko nga uh, paminsan ko ala una sa kagahon nga may ginapangita. Ko ti kadulom ti ko kakululbaan pero basi may Mabuwas na lang kay kakulol ba? Sometimes I say to myself aloud, Satan, galitik na lang ulo mo. Because the foot of Jesus has crushed the head of the serpent. So, gina-remind ko lang siya, hindi, hindi ka na magpasundahig, di galitik na lang ulo mo, madugangan pag ginakaroon. <laughs> Resist the devil, not temptation. Liwaton ko sa pagsiling, no man can resist temptation. The only way to win over temptation is to run away. But never run away from the devil. Never resist the devil. This is how it works. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Promise ginyo, just resist him, he will flee. Bisan daw gina kurdam ka In Jesus' name, I rebuke you. Bisan daw ka pa maulay ka nasang nervyos. Kay mauna pa na siya dalagan sa imo. Come near to God and He will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning. Joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up. So, check your spirit control and Satan-dominated barometer. When you live by faith and trust in God, Satan moves back. When we do not trust God, Satan moves in. Amo lang gina sa permi. Every day na, every day gina nga swing back and forth. Confuse Satan so that when you are worrying, worship, then you will confuse Satan. When you find yourself worrying, worship the Lord. Then Satan will be confused and he will at at trust. 
The command, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a loring lion, looking for us to devour, resist him, standing firm in the faith. Always stand firm in the faith. Always be on guard. Ang iningay tsura sang gabantay, this should be our attitude towards music, reading materials, association, bantay, ano ni? Iyan isang ginoo, makapaayo ni, hindi. Buisit ni sa espiritu ko, or bantay. Kung sa words pa ni daddy ko, otak soldado. Otak soldado. Bantay ang lipot sa kontra. Basi sa balasahon, sa sugilanon, sa music. So, there are other forms of satanic control. Social structures or institutions. At ito on a personal level. Pero on a bigger level, grabe ang control ni satanas. Religions, ideologies, governmental structures, repressive social and economic structures. I'll just go over this very quickly, then we will end on a note of victory. Religions, for example, according to the World Fact Book, ang Christianity is only 31.50%, roughly 30%. Of the 31.50 or 30%, Roman Catholics are 16.85 and Protestants 6.15, Orthodox 3.96, Anglican 1.26, etc. So, and then ang Muslim is 23, ang Hindu 13, Buddhist 6%, Sikh 0.35, Jews 0.22, Baha'i 11, and all the others. Tanawa nyo na lang blaw, tanawa. Immediately, 70% immediately, do not know Christ. 30% lang, more or less. Sa 30% who say they know Christ, who among them have a personal relationship with Him? Kay posible man niya nga mimbro ka sa religion, why ka man niya personal relationship with God? And sa nagasiling nga, may personal relationship ko sa ginoo, who among them walk undefiled? So you see how much control has Satan over the world. Jutay lang gid ang naga walk with Christ. Okay. Controlled by ideologies. Communism. How much does communism control of the world? Look at this map. Communist ni tanan. Wala ni Jews tanan. One third. How much Islam controls the world? Amo ni tanan nga map. Sunni, uh, Shiite, etc. Grabe na ni, ti, ni ma-wonder pa kung Satan is in control of the world or not. Sa ideologies na lang. Governments, murders caused by governments. Look at how Satan controls the world by using governments. During the time of Lenin, Mao, Hitler, how many were killed? Terrible nga summary. All deaths caused by governments. Soviet Union, uh, Nazi regime, Sa the savagery of Japan, the Khmer Rouge, the Vietnam War, Poland, ethnic cleansing. Mm. Ah, terrible na ni. Ti, si Tatanas pang harvest lang ang pang harvest ang mga kalag. How about gender freedom, equality, and respect? Ining a worldview, how much is he convincing the world of these things? Kung hindi natun mapunggan, very soon there will be five sexes. Male, female, Homosexual, lesbian, and transsexual. First reading na na in the Congress of the Philippines. What is the effect when we stand up for God's word? The world will hate you. You know that it has hated me before it hated you, Jesus said. If you were of the world, the world would love its own, but because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So, the objective of the devil against the Christian, you can put them in 12 Captions all beginning with the letter D. To defile you, to deceive you, to divert you, to dullen you, to make you dull, to dilute your passion, to destroy you, to detain you. <laughs> Ang detention, grabe ni. Spiritual warfare, the, the art of detention. Amuning art of detention. Hindi ka na makontrol ni Satanas. Kay committed ka na sa ginoo. Maserve ka na gid. Give up siya sa imo. Proset upon niya ka. Mga asawa ka, mamana ka. Itaw-tawan niya ka sang hindi committed kay Jesus. Di bugto, gintilaok mo da. 
Kaya para hindi na lang kamo mag-away, baharan mo ang serbisyo mo sa Diyos. That's the call, that's called the art of detention. Kaya hindi ka na makontrol mo. So diri ka na lang i-contain. He may also depress or discourage you. He will make you doubt the Lord. He will make you disobey the Lord and eventually his purpose is to destroy you. If he cannot destroy you physically, he will destroy you morally, reputationally. Your testimony is destroyed. Basta pili lang siya. This is what the world system wants to do with us. Defilement, deception, diversion, make us dull, dilute our passion, destroy, detain, depress, discourage, doubt, disobey. May nabasahan ko nga uh, importante. One strategy of Satan against the Christians using the world is to make you very busy. Busy means being under Satan's yoke. Oh, keep them busy with non-essentials. Tempt, tempt them to overspend and go into debt. Make them work long hours to maintain empty lifestyle. Discourage them from spending time with family. Overstimulate their mind with television and computer. Fill their coffee table and nightstand with newspaper and magazine so they have no time to read the Bible. Flood their mailbox with shipstick promotion. Put glamour models on TV and on magazine covers to keep them focused on outward appearances. Make sure couples are too exhausted for physical intimacy so that they will be tempted to look elsewhere. Make Santa and Easter Bunny bigger than Jesus. Involve them in good causes so that they won't have time for eternal things. Grabe. Make them self-satisfied. Keep them busy in their own strength. So, this is another worldly attack on our Christian. Ari pagid worldly attack? Uh, I mean, satanic control. Do you know that the banking system, the economic system, this is now on the level of the occult. We will take this up in greater detail. Lesson 3, paagyan ko lang. The American dollar and most monetary system is controlled by the occult particularly Freemasonry. This is the all-seeing eye that you see in uh, the American dollar. It is the power of Osiris. And it is called the all-seeing eye. It is present in all Masonic lodges. And the founders of the democratic banking system all introduced Masonic uh, symbols in the banking system. This is the World Trade Center. Beneath the World Trade Center is the all-seeing eye. They devoted the world banking system to the occult. Amoni ang ground levels and World Trade Center. All the trade in the world is done in the spirit of the occult. Uh, they are going for the new world order. This is too long already to, to expound. And the media is also controlled. There is no such thing in America as an independent press. David Rockefeller, one of those who are putting up a new world order. Silingya, we are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings for almost 40 years to propagate the new world order. So Silingya ni isang ni John Swinton, a former New York Times chief of staff, we are intellectual prostitutes. Uh, wala na niya ang ininggi na siling uh, free press. Oh, look at how Masons put their imprint in the US dollar. This thing that you see, A, Anwit, uh, Coeptis, S, uh, Nobus Ordo Seclorum, they form the word Mason. One, two, three, four, five. So it's a hexagram. Uh, which is not a good symbol. Gin, gin devote na na nila ang worldly system to occultism. There are Masonic symbols all over. There are 13 leaves in the olive branch of the US dollar. There are 13 bars and stripes in the shield, 13 bars, 13 arrows in the right claw, 13 letters in E pluridus unum on the ribbon, 13 stars in the green crest above, 32 long feathers on its right wing represented the 32nd degree in Freemasonry, 13 granite stones in the pyramid, the 13 layers represent the 13 Illuminati bad lines, 13 letters in Anwit Coiptis, 
etc., etc. These are all pentagrams, the etc., etc. You just research that, you will be shocked. So, will you wonder if the return of Jesus will deal with these things? We are so blessed because in the recent uh, release of the Philippine Peso Bill, there is an inscription. Pinagpala ang bayan na ang Diyos ay ang Panginoon. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. That is Psalm 33, verse 12. There is a Bible verse in the Philippine Peso. So our, our economy is getting better. So, ang, ang command structures ang demons, which we will take up in greater detail, lesson 3, pagyan ko lang, is there are principalities, powers, there are rulers, and there are spiritual wickedness in high places. What are principalities? They are called the first ones. Most excellent, a person or thing that goes before. So these are head demons in charge of other demons. Then there are powers. Powers, demons entrusted with powers. These are demons with specific rulership powers. We will talk about them in lesson 3. But there are rulers of darkness of this world. There are territorial spirits. These are head demons in charge of territories. And there are demons that are called spiritual wickedness in heavenly places or pneumatica poneria, which empowers certain specific sins like Spirit of pornography, spirit of violence, spirit of perversion, spirit of corruption, spirit of poverty, etc., etc., etc. So, my level na sila, principalities, powers, rulers, spiritual wickedness. In spiritual wa warfare proper, you discern, what are you up against? Am I up against a principality? My rules of engagement. When you are up against a principality, you must do so with the body of Christ. Because it is army versus army. You don't move in unless you have been specifically ordered by the Lord to deal with a principality demon. Are you dealing with a territorial spirit? Are you dealing with a specific power demon that empowers a certain class of sin? We will talk about that in level 3. So, the overwhelming majority of the world is under this structure. Amun ang under sila sa kay Satanas. Amun ang gina-order ni Satanas, political, social, religious, economic, media, education, etc. Jutay lang ang naga under this very structure under the Lord, under kay Jesus. So, ang ilang politika, ang ilang social, religious life, economic life, etc. is ordered by the Lord. And, Tani, si Jesus has already dealt with the demons, he drove them out. He has exercised power over them. And we who are under his kingdom in dealing with the world are supposed to manifest the victory of Jesus over the demonic world. But the question is, how effective are we in achieving that? Okay. I will explain this in greater detail in lesson Three. But here is what the word of the Lord says for us believers. The powers and authorities have already been disarmed in so far as we are concerned. They have been made a public spectacle because Jesus Christ triumphed over them by the cross. The devil who holds the power of death is destroyed and freedom from fear of death is given to believers. Hebrews 2.14 in John 14, 12 to 14, greater things than this you will do. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If we are conscious of our stand in Christ, we know that the world system has no power and authority over us. Silingi ni Jesus, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority. So, atongin pang discuss na to ang mga heavens to, etc., etc. Tani, aware kita, why na na sang puder sa aton. 
Ti mo makot ka, ti nga ang damo pag yapon Christians, pirdi. Because we do not convert authority to power. All authority was given to Jesus in heaven and on earth. We must go therefore. Ti mo makot ka mo, hindi ko ka gets, Brother Lindon. Okay, amo ni. Example, gin-isyuhan ka ni Jesus SPA or gintagaan niya ka badge, pito, kag-45. Naka-take out ka na. My authority. Kag-tuin na to ang kriminal kag-i-arrestar. Kay may authority ka. Implement it. Enforce it. Amo nang aton nga i-learn sa lesson 3. How do you enforce the authority? Lord, you have won the war against principalities, powers, territorial spirits, wicked spirits that empower pornography, addiction. Why am I still defeated? It's a matter of enforcing the victory in Christ. We have to enforce it. Christ has come to destroy the devil's work. Through death, he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil. He triumphed over Satan, disarming the power that he holds over people, the power of death, because sin leads to death. So here is the battle plan for victory against the world. First, win the war against the flesh. Number two, be aware of the devil's schemes. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Devil's scheme, schema is strategy. Strategy. Reject all sights and sounds that are not of God. Watch and pray. Walk in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Put on the whole armor of God. Do not give the devil a foothold. Do not entertain. Do not feed. Do not be interested in worldly things. Soak in the Word of God. Soak in worship. A very simple plan for victory against the world. Some practical steps. Decide to live simply. Buy from okay, okay. Hindi. Lao ko lang. Inang fight bala the tendency to be known as a branded person. Are you following? Mamal, you know, it's it's a little thing, but it's a big thing. Are you following? Ti ano gid kun hindi branded? Does it define you? Does ang imo tanan nga trappings di tanan may mga ano gid nga akon wala gid brand are you less of a person? Stop watching and listening to worldly sights and sounds. Remember, you are not just listening to worldly sights and sounds. You are live streaming spirit presence and spirit power. There is a spirit behind it. The more you take it in, the more defiled you will become. Go into scripture memorization and program. By the way, maski wala ka kapamati, Ibla, kung ang imong uh, balay, imong salakyan, ang music, wala mo ginabanta yan. Even if you are not listening to it, you imbibe the spirit. Remember, it's a spirit-to-spirit -spirit transaction. Learn fasting. We will learn fasting in lesson three. Live by the Torah. Ha? Understand what is clean, what is unclean. A final end to look forward to. Final end. The seventh angel, Revelation 11.15, sounded. And there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. And He shall reign forever and ever. Dali na lang gid ining worldly system makolaps kag matumba na ini. Dali na lang gid. Hindi ka magpa-insnare sa ila kay basi maupod ka sa tumba. Final encouragement, John 16.33. Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Whether you do it in the style of David, toppling Goliath, or in the style of Daniel, just by being at peace in your prayer life, the Lord said, 
we have overcome the world in Christ. 